Mona uh, I want to thank God for this opportunity that he has given us. My name is Lazarus Murio Kindego. Christ is Lord and Savior of my heart. And today we'll be talking about being a faithful steward. And we're going to hear our word from the book of First Peter chapter 4, from verses 10 to 11, which says, each of you should, uh, each of you should use what gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the way the word of the very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with strength, with the strength uh, God provides. So so that, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we adore your name this wonderful uh, day that you have given us. God, we pray that God, as we listen to your word, as we hear, O oh God, what you have installed for us, we pray that your presence shall be together with us and you shall guide us through in everything that we do because you're holy and you're worthy. God, use me as your vessel to be able to reach your people the way you want me to. We thank you and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I want us to understand uh, what is this being a faithful steward? And what is being a steward? Uh, being a steward is protecting and expanding the assets of the owner. Protecting and expanding the assets of the owner. And what are these assets we are talking about? We are not talking about the assets uh, maybe in the company or anywhere else. But we are talking about the assets that God has given you as a person. This asset is the talent that God has given you, the capability that God has given you to be able to uh, reach and enrich many people into this world. So when we talk about being a faithful steward in the presence of God, he, God expects us that whatever he gave us as uh, his children, we should use it to the maximum capacity so that we can be able to reach and en enrich others. And so um, I want us to look at four things of a strong and a faithful steward in the presence of God. So number one, a strong and a faithful steward has to own. You have to own. You have to own that talent that God gave you. You have to own it so that when you're going to, uh, to utilize it, you'll be able to utilize it knowing that I have owned it because God has given it to me. And number two is commitment. You have to commit to that duty. You have to commit to that obligation that God has given you as an individual. As a Christian, you have to commit yourself to that. And number four, you have to be accountable. We all have to be accountable to what God has entrusted us with. And that is why he's calling us faithful stewards. And if God did not uh, give us the obligation to take care of what he has entrusted to us with, then we cannot be accountable for anything. But here as Christians, God has given us the capability and he has given us that duty to be um, faithful stewards in his presence. If you are a pastor, if you are an evangelist, if you are a youth pastor, if you are a secretary, if you are a, whatever you are in whatever position you are, God has given you an obligation. If you're the CEO of a certain company, if you are the teacher, if you, whatever you are in the presence of God, God has given you that duty to be a faithful steward in his presence. And that is why you have to be accountable for everything that God has given unto you. And number four is that if you are a faithful steward in the presence of God, then you will have a reward at the end of it. I want us to look at a small story that... Um, was given by somebody somewhere. And uh, uh, a woman walked into a butchery. And this woman, after she walked into a butchery, um, she said, do you uh, still have chicken? The butcherman opened his deep freezer and said, yes, I do have chicken. 
And then he took the one chicken that he had in his uh, freezer, deep freezer, and this chicken was weighing 1.5 kg. Um, the woman looked at the chicken and at the scale, she asked, do you have another that, that is a bit bigger than the one, than this one? Uh, the butcher man said yes. Uh, what happened is that this butcher man went back to his deep freezer and then the same, same chicken that uh, was in the deep freezer, <laughs> he removed it again. And at the weighing scale, now this chicken weighs 2 kg. That's wonderful, said the woman. I will take both of them, please. <laughs> In an instant like this, you realize at once that your integrity and your reputation are firmly on, on, the, lie, on the line. Your wisdom becomes foolishness and your cunning becomes stupid. Until now, the butcher man has his head inside the big freezer looking for the, for the first chicken. And that is exactly what we do as Christians. We are so cunning in such a way that we cannot even be able to express ourselves when we are in situations. If you look at this butcher man, if he had honestly said, no, I only have this chicken that is weighing 1.5 kg. That is, only, that is the only thing that I have. I don't have any other. Then he would not have found himself into a situation where he would still be looking for the first chicken that was weighing 1.5 kg. And being a faithful steward, always tell the truth in everything that you do. Why? Because that truth that you say, it will always set you free. And it is good to build a good name than to have riches. This butcher man, because God has entrusted him to be a good steward in selling meat to people. Uh, he decided to be cunning and he looked at the riches that he can have out of uh, being a cunning person. But it is better you have a good name because of the truth that you have or the truth that you make than to make riches in your life. Live to express yourself and not to, to oppress others. Being a good steward, using that talent that God has given you, do not use it to, um, um, impress, uh, to oppress others. Do not use it to oppress others. Do not use it to despise others. But indeed, use it for the benefit of others. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we adore you. We pray that King of all glory, as we learn and as we um, unto your presence, dear Lord, to come and uh, be good stewards in your presence. God, we pray that your presence and your power shall be together with us and you shall guide us through, O Lord. And that in everything that we do, O God, my Father, your presence shall dwell in us. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.